ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Talk Show the Musical, where we sing and dance and then talk about singing and dancing. And now here's your host, Spencer Walsh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Talk Show the Musical. Today I'm talking to my friend Jess Cooper, who is super cool. She's super nerdy and one of my favorite people who was in drama club t- two years ago. She graduated and went to college, as people often do. So it was super fun talking to her. So let's get to the episode with the power of editing. But since you've seen the show, you kind of know the top five questions that we ask everyone who's into theater. How did you get into theater? Well, my first show ever was uh, the best little theater in town in the, <laughs> s- in the sixth grade. Oh, yeah, in the sixth grade. Yeah, I was in the ensemble. And I guess ever since, I like thought it was dumb that I was in the ensemble. <laughs> so I just kept doing it until I got better parts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I know that you end high school theater on top. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, like literally, because you were like six feet tall, like seven yeah, feet tall. Yeah, seven feet tall. <laughs> like drywall stilts. That that would be f- like people who like don't know, haven't seen Fiddler, <laughs> would not know what she was. From a Sarah, from a Sarah, from a Sarah, from a Sarah. We were like on repeat, or we were having like an aneurysm or something. Yeah. <laughs> Because it took me, like, five minutes to get to the center of the stage. Frumazera, and then, like, we, we were supposed to stop at Frumazera, Frumazera. Hello, guys! Tevia! <laughs> yeah, but I saw some versions online, but there were some, like, terrible versions of Frumazera. Like, they were just like, what is it? I don't know how my husband! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I did less, like, some do, like, more of a character voice. <laughs> yeah. And I just kind of did, like, my some. voice, but, like, more annoying. <laughs> Tevia! <laughs> You were you had to pay your dues, you got to high school theater, and then you got parts and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but like it still took me a while. Like I didn't get into any of the musicals my um, freshman or sophomore year because I just can't dance. Like <laughs> I cannot. Like I can't. Like You're I try. You're physically incapable. And I'm just like. No, and she's Mr. actually Mr. Professor Mr. X. Field is like, ball change and i'm like god last <laughs> step what am i doing like i thought that i was a bad dancer too no. because i uh, i got the rabbi and fiddler on the roof and he's just like okay everyone's gonna jump up in the air it's like except you spencer you're gonna stay firmly on the ground they're like but but i, I want to be my spirit animal i mean like i think you're a pretty good dancer <laughs> somebody who can like watch turn it off and just get the choreography and just know all of it i don't know all of it i can look like i i look like i know all of it but my well, see, feet i can't, can't do even that. do that like my tapping is just like <laughs> look what i'm doing with my hands <laughs> my hands are phenomenal jazz hands i can do that that's why they put me on stilts is because i can't dance <laughs> <laughs> so what were your favorite shows that you were in um i think my favorite of all time is probably miracle worker when I got the chance to play Helen Keller. You were awesome as Helen Keller. Thank you. deserved you. that prize. That... You were awesome as assistant director. <laughs> yeah, watching that show over and over again and not really doing much. <laughs> not I really. was, well, like, I got so sick of Miracle Worker after, like, for, like, two weeks. <laughs> or, like, I had to watch it every night. And yeah. I could basically quote it. Like, not quite. But I could, like, you I knew You knew all it. of my lines. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I should have been out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you had that. to recast anyone in the ca- uh, the cast of Miracle Worker as Helen Keller, who would you cast? Probably Riley. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be good. I don't know. That show was really fun, and it also hurt me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that was. Leah got jealous one day. No. <laughs> I know. Like Leah Hall is a wonderful. Leah person. Leah Leah Hall is a wonderful human. Yeah. At least I think she's a human. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I watch Doctor Who. I can't be too... That's true. I can't... We can't be too cautious. No, you're a wonderful true. whatever you are, Leah. Yeah. But we can't be sure you're a human unless I have evidence. Mm. Anyway. What were your favorite shows to watch? My favorite shows to watch? Uh, I don't know. Um, I really... My favorite, like, show... Is Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street. <laughs> yeah. Just because it's so such a creative idea, like, and something, like, you wouldn't think would work in a musical format, but, like, it works so well, and, like, when you get the right cast and the right ensemble and the right Well, the set, right ensemble, right cast is, like, true with anything, really. Yeah, that's true, but, like, oh, it just but hits. Sweeney Todd's so, like, uh, weird. so good, though. <laughs> like, I like weird stuff, but if you tell people, oh, whoa, what's Sweeney Todd about? It's about a guy who chops up people because he's a barber. <laughs> And puts them into pies. Is that it? No, it's also a musical. It's a musical. <laughs> but it's not, 
not it's like a, a musical. It's not, like a, it's not like a musical. It's like a musical. <laughs> Is that how you pitch shows to people? It's not like a TV show, but a TV show. We're not talking this or this. We're talking this. <laughs> SpongeBob. <laughs> you okay? You okay there, buddy? What are your dream roles? My dream role is definitely Lucy from Sweeney Todd. Like, we're not talking this. We're talking this. Because, uh, She's such a great character, and like she's like, Holmes, and you're like, what is your story? Yeah. Who are you? Who am I? Yeah, I would also love to play Jean Valjean. Everyone wants to play Javert. Like, yeah. I had two people in a row that wanted to play Javert, and I don't know what, like, why. I think he's got some really great songs. Like, Stars is a really yeah, good Yeah, Stars song. is good. Really and, like, good. when he's like, Prisoner 246, hold on, let me Russell Crowe. <laughs> Prisoner 246, hold on. Your time is up and your parole's begun. You know what that means. And that's more like two, four, six, so oh, one. <laughs> and I'm just. Javert. No. And in one of the versions, like the guy just overacts. It's like your time is up and your parole's begun. <laughs> oh no, this is most unorthodox. Your time is up, Valjean. <laughs> no. The stars in your multitudes. There, out in the darkness. A like, fugitive like, running. Like, Christopher Lloyd, out in the darkness. <laughs> a fugitive running. Speaking of Christopher Lloyd, I mean, sort of. If you could make one movie, TV show, book, musical, uh, book a musical, or like anything. <laughs> what musical would you make a musical? Um, one that I think would like adapt really well for stage or musical. And it's like one of my personal favorites is the Princess Bride. Oh, that'd be a great musical. Yeah, I think it would adapt like really well for a stage. Inigo Montoya, like the ballad of Inigo Montoya, would be yeah. a, just an amazing just title for a song. Yeah. Uh, Inigo Montoya is such a great name. Yeah, <laughs> and he says it. My name is Inigo Montoya. You kill my father. Prepare to die. Wait, wait, Riva. Wait, wait, Riva. <laughs> he rides out on his horse. Oh, that's a little not PC. He's not Mexican. He's Spanish. <laughs> but like, I just think that'd be like totally, totally inconsistent. Yeah, it's like just a, like, like let's go. Like, a, like about to kill the man who killed my father. <laughs> I'm about to kill the man that killed my father. He has six fingers on his hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. But like a touching ballad. Would be... Yeah, that would be like awesome. Yeah. What would be like the first act ending point, in Princess Bride? Um, maybe like the sword fight, or like after the test, the battle of wits, like, cause that's when it like transitions like into the fire swamp oh, and like um, wedding. I, and... It'd probably be like when she finds out that the pi- that the pirate is Wesley. Yeah. Yeah, because then she could be like, he could be like, as you wish. And she'd be like, my sweet Wesley. And then I'd be like, Curtain. <laughs> Curtain. This is sign language for Curtain. It's not. That's a lie. It's actually this. No. You can't see me. I can't. I don't know sign language. I can spell. <laughs> and you were Helen Keller. I mean, all you need to know for Helen Keller is the, the letters. letters. Yeah. I Like, I know, like, most of the letters... But not like all of them. So One I time, like I was signing letters, and like Leah came up to me, and she like started to try signing letters, and she was like, "I can only do it into a hand." <laughs> I was like, "What?" <laughs> no, that was a weird time. Uh, so, uh, what? It, so, hair is a show that I do not know much about at all, besides it's about hippies. So, what's the show about? Like a basic plot, and who are you in it? Well, it's less about hippies and more about like the Vietnam War and, like, uh, how it reflected, like, the youth of of the 60s. It the takes youths. Place in 1968, the youths. Um, and, like, it's basically, it's mostly songs. It's, like, about 80% songs. And, like, with a few, like, segue scenes. And the songs, like, I mean, they don't really move the plot along. But, like, it's more of, like, a reflection of the times and the music of the times. And, like... Like, how, how the Vietnam... I, it's kind of like a Vietnam War protest, but, like, I don't know. There's plot and characters and music and <laughs> You know, the things stuff. that make a story a story. Yeah. But it's, like, it's very, like, trippy. Like, you need to, like, grasp what happens. Like, oh, I thought you were going to say you had to, like, do recreational thingies. No, yeah. I, to did, I, see. I did all the drugs. <laughs> I drank one whole marijuana. 
<laughs> so, so why do you think? I think I might know the answer to this, judging on like what you said the show's about. Why do you think it's not as big as something like Lena's Phantom or Wicked or something like that? Um, I think hair is more of a reflection of the times. And it's very like stuck in like where it was. Yeah, it's very like. Whereas with, like, Wicked and Les Mis, like, the themes are, like, something you can, like, redemption. Kind of like, like, like Star Wars is still. Outcast, yeah. And, like, Lord of the you Rings. Can, you can still, like, identify. And with Harry, there's there's things you can identify with, like, fixing society. And, like, uh, like uh, I don't know, I guess growing up in, like, a time that, that doesn't really agree with your beliefs and stuff. But I just think, like, I feel like people, like... Les Mis and Phantom more because the story is easier to follow yeah. and it's more like clear cut what the meaning of the plays are yeah. whereas hair it's more open to interpretation on how you want to believe in it and like how you want to perceive it you know what I mean yeah you know what I'm saying? it's like I don't want to choose my own thing I want I want my beliefs told to me gosh darn it. <laughs> <laughs> how is college theater different from high school theater hair in my mouth Sorry. hair <laughs> hair um, um, I guess it's different in that they, I don't know, they expect so much more from you, I think. Oh, their standards. Standards. I have to work? <laughs> Worse. Oh, Ma, it ain't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Like, um, we have less rehearsals in our organization. It's a stage left Miami Student Theater. It's, like, all student run. But, like, we're expected to, like, work a lot more on our own. It's more, like, on you. Yeah. Like, on the failings of the actor, rather than the failings of, I don't know, the director or whatever. Is the director a student? Yeah. Oh, wow. His, his name's Daniel McClurkin. Did he pick the show, or did they just, like, yeah, we're yeah. doing hair? No, yeah. Um, the director usually, he probably, if I share this, he's probably gonna watch it. Hello. Um, <laughs> um, the director goes to the stage left committee, and they, like, potential directors pitch the shows they want to do, and, like, their reasoning, and, like, stuff like that. And the, I think the board, like, votes or something. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I'm not a higher up. I'm just a freshman. <laughs> but then they, like, pick which show they want to do as a whole. And then that director can can do it. And they basically have a free reign of how they want to do the show as long as it's not, like, too expensive or, like, I don't know. All right. Here's what I want. I want four unicycles. Yeah. I want eight snakes. Yeah. Eight. And I want donuts. Exactly. And, <laughs> and I want two dozen donuts. And that's going to be our cast. That's the cast. <laughs> The set is made of people. <laughs> See, it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor for life. <laughs> like, I feel like it, like some schools, if they want to do something really artsy, and they just say, like, don't get it, like, eh, it's a metaphor. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's a metaphor, It's Hazel a tour de force. Metaphor, Hazel Grace. <laughs> no, when I said it's a metaphor, I was just like, it's a metaphor. What's I a guess... metaphor? <laughs> no, I was just like, like, my voice cracks or something, like, See? Puberty boy strikes again. I'm the Batman. <laughs> I'm Batman. So what makes, oh, uh, what was the director's name again? Daniel. Daniel da McClurkin. Daniel McClurkin. What makes him different from, like, directors that you worked with in the past? Like, or, with, like, with acting up in Legally Blonde or whatever other experience you have with them or uh, Mr. Young, you know, that, um, that guy. He's, he's very much into the spirit of hair he very much like gets the show and really wants us to get the show like mr young when we did like show like period shows where it's like not the present he wouldn't like assign us like readings or like videos whereas dan will be like hey watch this to like try and get you in the mindset like basically to get you as close to like what it felt like to be a hippie in the 60s so now like you said it's not about hippies but that's kind of what i prepped because i said hey is this a show about hippies and you responded yes so that's well yeah it is a show about hippies but like the meaning isn't like hippies are great <laughs> it, but yeah. like this it's a show about hippies yeah uh so what do you think makes a good hippie name um a good hippie name i think it has to be something you c connect with okay but i think in the show the hippies they more have like I don't want to say normal, but, like, more... They appear more normal because they're the protagonists, and you kind of understand, like, what they're saying. Yeah, the more... They have more common names, is yeah. what I want to say. Like, there's... The main character's name is Claude, and then there's Sheila and Dion, and... So, what makes a good hippie name is you're going to... You have to connect to it and stuff, so we're going to play a game. I okay. got, like... I got, like, six or seven of 
uh, fictional characters, and we're going to come up with hippie names for them. Oh, okay. Instead of coming up with the names, let's say, like, could you see them as hippies? Yeah. Captain Kirk, you could see, is a hippie. Yeah, me I too. Because I can see him... He spends a lot of time on other planets. Yeah. And into, he's like, got that... free love. He's really into free love. He's like, let me have sex with everybody. All of my... All of my inferior... The people below me in the chain of Your command. milkshake does, in fact, bring like, all the boys. All the girls. <laughs> and Spock. <laughs> That's illogical. <laughs> so Ash probably would could be a hippie because he spends all his time with animals. Well, actually, he'd probably be more of a Disney princess because he spends all his time with, like, Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon the musical. <laughs> Gotta catch him. Uh-huh. Hey, in my last name's catch him. <laughs> wow. Okay, Finn the human, he probably couldn't be from what I've heard. No, he's really into fighting. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see that, like, directly contradicting. Yeah. Okay, this is probably going to be the least hippie person on the list. Drew Stitham suggested Shrek. Shrek? Where was that donkey? I thought you were going to say Drew Stidham, and I was like, <laughs> he's not a fictional character. No, he's a figment of all of our imaginations. All of our imaginations. I yeah. think Shrek would I don't... be into the the no like no societal pressures. Well, Michelle Guillot is really into Hamilton right now, so the historical figure... Ha- Alexander, Alexander Ham- Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen. Could he be a hip? I have not listened to the or soundtrack. Or listen to any other music. Me neither. Apparently, it's a lot really of know, rap. I don't know anything about him. <laughs> you um, like? I know he got shot, but there are a lot of holes in that story. So uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, he probably didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> like I knew that he I mean, missed is on he purpose. Kind of like angry. Is he like an angry guy? I I don't think so. Like he was very he, he like, was very Paul business. Michelle and be like, hey. It's like, call her right now, say what happens. Do you actually want to? I mean, we can. I don't know. I'll, I'll text her right now. I'll say, like, hey, Michelle, would you can... Michelle. Talk show. Uh, <laughs> talk. Jessica Cooper showing. featuring Michelle Gale. This voice. Talk showing RN. I'm going to drink some water. <laughs> would... Hamilton, <laughs> be a good hippie. That's just preposterous <laughs> on so many levels. <sighs> She's gonna be like, "What the heck?" What to heck? <laughs> All right, and then, darn it, we still had more. I think there was like one more. <laughs> Kayla Stroud really likes Dash from The Incredibles. Would he make a good hippie? <laughs> He's like. Seven. <laughs> well, okay. You Five like, years. Of... Maybe like Incredibles two dash. <laughs> uh. Like actually, okay. I don't. I don't think as of right now he'd make a good hippie. No, as of the seven year old dash. <laughs> no. I don't think he'd be up for all the drugs and the. No, seven year olds <laughs> typically don't respond well to drugs. I think historically speaking. The only thing people that we thought would be like good hippies on our list are Captain Kirk and Ash Ketchum. <laughs> Ash Ketchum's ten, but he looks like fifteen now. <laughs> He's been ten for like twenty years. How long have you been ten? <laughs> ben ten. Say it, say it out loud. A Pokemon trainer. <laughs> what a great movie. <laughs> what movie? Twilight. That's from Twilight. Cries. <laughs> How long have you been a Pokemon trainer? <laughs> <laughs> Zoo. Uh, what can you do, Edward? I can turn into a Zubat. <laughs> that would be like Jacob. Like, Jacob's a Zubat. Like Jacob. No, Jacob's an Jake. <laughs> That's not the noise a Zubat makes. like, <laughs> Closing thoughts. Why should people see hair? My brain, I think it'll move you. Like, I think it'll be... I think what you think about the 60s and about hippies will be changed when you see hair. So I think... I like, there's going to be a lecture afterwards. Like, the, the mindset of the hippies on the opening night, I think. So I I hope everybody gets a chance to come to Miami and see it. Well, we're about to start our performance, especially because my laptop's going to run out of battery holding this audio file. Ah! So, you are performing. What song? Um, I'm performing My Conviction from Hair. Awesome. Um, 
It's actually really, really weird because Margaret Mead is typically played by a male actor. So it's, the song is meant for a tenor. <laughs> so parts of it, I'm like, oh. <laughs> so that'll be fun. <laughs> Alrighty, well, let's go there with the power of editing. <laughs> I would just like to say that it is my conviction that longer hair and other flamboyant affectations of appearance are nothing more than the male's emergence from his drab camouflage into the gaudy plumage which is the birthright of his sex. There is a peculiar notion that elegant plumage and fine feathers are not proper for the men when Actually, that is the way things are in most species. Woo! Great Thank job! You. Thanks. All right, so stick around uh, for talk to the musical. This has been Jess. Thanks for hanging out. This was really fun. Yeah, it was really great. risque. Yeah. But hopefully that'll be cut it's out. Scary. Maybe not. Keep it in, Spencer. Oh, wait, that's a sexual. No! I'm sorry, turn off the camera!